Listen, listen. The only thing I'm saying to you, Al, we got to break the habit of saying things like the Europeans. We're letting them off the hook. And them power now. You know, it's just like, I know for a fact, before you met me, Everybody, you were saying descendants of slaves. Don't lie. Yeah. Everybody was. Yeah. Now, the reason I'm trying to get you to stop doing that is because your children need to learn that they're not the descendants of anybody's slave. Why is it that I want the children to learn that they're not the descendants of slaves? They won't have that to anchor them in life. Anchor and them. they won't be slaves, they won't be slaves. in life. Now, at the same time, I'm suggesting to everybody, y'all stop getting it into these children's brains that they should argue with these white folks. Mm -hmm. uh, hey. Mr. Dr. Black and I were talking the other day, and it dawned upon me. I decided I'm not calling white supremacy people white supremacy because that's elevating me. Call to find something else to call them. Here's, here's the thing. We can we can talk like we're really learning something, mm -hmm. and we can act like I know now. Now that I've agreed, that now I know. But see, until you practice, until you practice, the brain won't change. That ain't no lie. The brain won't change. You're gonna keep doing the same thing, and then you've got to justify what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You see, in a minute you're gonna realize that. You're actually making yourself appear as an inferior, and you're making those that you say are your enemies appear as somebody superior to you. So, so when you, you said years ago, whenever you uh, are saying white superiority, you are axiomatically invoking black inferiority. So that's one reason that you never hear me talking anything about white supremacy or white superiority. The only reason I may use the terms is because Neely Fuller and others who came out of the 1950s and the 1940s and the 1930s and the 1920s, they were trying to work through something mentally. And they had to go through this to work through it. Now, because of what they did, and they were the ones who came up with these thoughts about white supremacy and white superiority, they were figuring something out. Well, goddammit, by now, it ought to be figured out. That's right. <laughs> and you are going to now lessen yourself. <laughs> Looking at them, talking about some damn white supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's nonsense. Because you're saying something back to yourself when you say that. Every time. Now, here's the thing. I have tried to suggest over and over and over to everybody. White supremacy came into existence when they created long vowels and short vowels in order to justify something that was being done with language when the British Empire was taking control from the Spanish Empire. And when a small fishing village actually defeated the Spanish Armada, the one thing that they realized that they were going to have to do is take control of language. They did that by creating a vowel system. Now you had the long vowels and the short vowels. What advantage? Like you have here, the minority and the majority. And the majority. What advantage did them inserting the concept of long vowels and short vowels? Give to them. Do you know what a short vowel is? Man, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. God, I can't remember, man. I don't know if I ever learned. No. It's a Latin phone. A Latin sound. Okay. 
And so in order to be more superior than Latin, we want English to be the superior language. And once you have the superior language, now you have white supremacy. Just on that. Just on language. Nothing else.